Hi, everybody. Um, now, normally I do videos on mushroom dyeing or plant dyeing or lichen dyeing and foraging for those dyes. Um, but I thought I would do something a little bit different today. And that's that I am preparing to do some field work next week. So when I'm not doing dyeing or making dyeing videos, I am a wildlife biologist. So that often means that I will go out into different areas um, and tackle some of the wildlife questions that are around. Um, so at the moment, <clears throat> um, I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is quite wet uh, a lot of the year. Um, and then I'm heading out on Sunday. I am flying up to the what's called the Peace Region, which is the northeastern portion of British Columbia. I am landing in Fort St. John, and I will be looking at fisher habitat. So I have my book here, my Mammals of British Columbia. And if I go to page 104, which of course I closed, um, we have fishers. So what fishers are, they're in the, the Mustelid family. So it's, it's considered a large member of the weasel family. They are quite secretive. They're quite sort of fast darters in the forest. Um, and we have two populations in British Columbia, one in the south central portion, which are of quite high conservation concern. And there is a second population up into the piece that extends into Alberta uh, called the boreal population. And they are considered right now blue listed, which means we're kind of keeping an eye on them. We don't want to get them into the red. So being red listed, this is a much, much bigger conservation concern. So now is the time, if a species is blue listed, to really try and manage them better and making sure we don't always end up, you know, what we call a triage situation, which you're triaging endangered species. We want to keep animals off that endangered list. So uh, my my field work next week is going to be um, heading into some habitat which looks good for Fisher and putting up wildlife cameras. So these are special cameras you can put up in the in the in the forest um, that will capture images of mo anything moving past. So a grizzly bear, black bear, white tailed deer, moose, and Fisher. So we're gonna put these cameras up in locations we think Fishers are gonna be on, which is gonna be game trails mineral licks, and possibly denning trees. So this species, we call dens in, in these trees. So um, there it's going to be balsam poplar and aspen. And so when a tree gets large enough, it can get rot inside. So there's a big open cavity on the inside of the tree. And that's where fishers like to den. Um, and so if we find any really good candidates, we might put some cameras up and see if, if those are being used. Um, it's, it's November. It's the beginning of November now. And those cameras will be up for the next three months. Um, and the species likes to have their babies in, in March. So um, we'll be sort of gearing up, gearing up for that. Um, and I'm really, I'm really excited. But I'm also a little bit nervous because obviously when you head further north, um, you're looking at lower temperatures. So I'm going from usually my very wet habitat uh, to very much, much colder habitat. So I've been packing and that's kind of what made me think about doing this video is, uh, okay, how do, how do I actually pack up gear and what do I pack? In, in case anyone was curious, what exactly you pack to go and do Fisher wildlife camera work. So the cameras are already up there. We're also going to be testing what are called exclusion boxes. So we have um, people who trap. So they have their own trap lines. And one of the species uh, of fur bearers that people trap for are martens, which are smaller than fishers. But fishers can still get trapped um, in the traps. And that's what we don't want. So um, the province has developed these sort of wooden boxes you can put around traps with with a hole and the hole is small enough that martin can get in and out no problem but fishers with their face structure their cheekbones can't get through so we're also going to be testing out some of those boxes we will put uh bait inside the boxes but no traps we're just going to bait the boxes um and see if fishers uh will, will come and if they can get in or not so sort of testing the boxes out for the province so that's kind of exciting um, and again, looking at whether fisher are, are present, um, there are certainly prey species, which is snowshoe hare and porcupine are around, um, which is usually a good indication that fishers could use the habitat. And if we do find them, hopefully we can say this is not a great area to log or this is, this is a great area to leave alone. Um, and hopefully we can just keep having fisher making more fisher, which is what we want to see. 
here, I just wanted to take a second and actually show you some of the field gear that I'll be packing uh, to go with me for this trip. So this is a vest. I like packing at least one vest. It's an easy way to dress up your field gear. Um, it also obviously helps keep you warm. Um, over here, this is my field vest. <laughs> um, and this is what I wear as my outer layer. Um, here is where I keep my bear spray. I won't be flying up, obviously, with any bear spray, but I'll get some when I'm up there. Um, I have uh, a section here for my pens and pencils. I have my Write in the Rain um, book. This is our special paper that you can write in in pouring rain and it doesn't run. Um, I usually have one of these, which is a pen. A pen. Um, it's actually equipment to help keep my binoculars clear, so it comes with a brush for the lenses. And then this is something that you can use to help make sure your lenses are nice and clean. This is really great if you're having to do work in the marine environment, because you can also get a lot of salt buildup if you're doing anything uh, with your marine surveys. Um, I always have a whistle. This is actually the storm whistle. I think it's one of the strongest whistles in the world, just in case. Um, and then I usually have a ruler for wildlife work and a compass, old fashioned compass. Um, and then I have pockets. Um, I have some tape though I don't use it very much anymore. And then there are pockets at the Anyway, back. That's, the, that's the vest. Then I have my jacket, my winter jacket. Then I have my rain pants for extra coverage. I have these, these are steel-toed hiking boots. Not, it's hard to find a pair of steel-toed hiking boots that are comfortable, these fit the bill. So I'll either probably bring those up or I do have rubber boots. Some of the work that we're gonna be doing, yeah, I have to splash around in creeks. Into the um, bush. So I have new rubber boots that are bendable, which is very exciting if you have to like crawl through the bush to have footwear that's a little bit more friendly. I have inserts. I have purchased brand new inserts. I'm not showing you old inserts. Uh, I have tried to put them in. I have discovered they are too big, so I will be cutting these down. Um, and another thing I've gotten, especially sort of for walking around town, if we walk around, are these sort of very simple crampons. I'm hoping if it's really icy, um, those could help. So I have those. I have long underwear. I have field pants, which are going to be a little bit tough. I have a new winter jacket. I have gloves. Um, often for field work, I like using those half gloves that leave my fingers free, especially if you're doing camera work because you're pushing buttons and you're setting things up. Um, so I couldn't find like really good half gloves. So I'll use sort of my old ones and then I've got some, some newer gloves. Um, I've got a couple of hats um, and I guess something more, probably a sweater or two. Uh, and hopefully that will keep me sorted. I've got nice wool socks. Wool socks are key for field work. Um, I know sometimes if you go into the hiking stores, they'll have cotton socks that are like the really warm ones. But really, if you can go for wool, um, somebody once told me that, you know, if we invented wool tomorrow, it would be this new amazing material because it really is so fantastic in terms of keeping you warm. So if you can always have warm, warm socks in the woods. Um, yeah, I guess that's everything. I'm going to keep packing, but, uh, that's a slice of my life as I am packing up for fisher work next week. Hope you're all doing great. Talk to you soon.